hello everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel in last video we have seen the maculez method which is used to find out the deflection and slope at any point when simply supported beam is supported to a point load or uniformly distributed load so today we will see some numerical on maculez method clear so let's start the today's session based on numerical on Maclay's method. So I will read the problem statement. A beam of 6 meter long, the given data I will write. So length is given 6 meter that is 6000 mm. Simply supported at its end carries a point load of 40 kN. Point load is there and distance is given 4 meter from the lip. So if I draw the diagram then the situation is like this. There is a simply supported beam is there A and B. So there will be reaction RA and RB. The beam entire length is of 6 meter and a point load of 40 newton is acting on this particular beam so this is 40 kN from the distance of 4 meter from left support now find the deflection under the load so let's say this is the C point and here we want to find out the deflection the moment of inertia is given I equal to 7.33 into 10 raised to 7 mm raised to 4 and Eng's modulus for the material of the beam is given 2 into 10 raised to 5 mm raised to 4. So here we need to find out the deflection of the beam at point C. Clear? Now here if I mold this numerical as the as we have seen the derivation earlier. So here I can say A, here I can say B and here I can say W for 40 Newton point load. Clear? Now if you see this numerical then I can say that A it will be equal to 4000 mm value of B equal to 6000 mm value for the W is 40 kN so I can write 40,000 Newton clear now I is given e is given now instead of derivating entire derivation I will just show you over here here we have considered the A distance B and W so here we have derived the equation so deflection at point C clear so it is equal to W A square B square divided by 3 E I L so here corrections is there E I L clear so that will be the deflection of the beam now here if you observe here we have EI into YC so in last lecture we evaluated this equation for EI into YC clear so just a small correction is there and if you want YC value then we need to consider EI in that side so here clear so instead of deriving entire equation I would say I will take directly that is deflection at point C at YC it will be equal to negative negative means it is in downward direction obviously deflection will get in positive what this indicate it will indicate the deflection in downward direction so w a square b square divided by 3 e i into l just put the values that is 40,000 into a value is 4,000 square now b value sorry this is the entire length of the beam so what will be the b b will be 6,000 minus 4,000 it will be equal to 2000 mm 
so 2000 square divided by 3 into e value is 2 into 10 raise to 5 into i is 7.33 into 10 raise to 7 so if you solve this then the value will be equal to so this is negative 9.7 m clear so this will be the deflection of the beam at point c clear so just a small correction in the previous video that is ei we need to consider over here simple okay so let's see the next numerical which is again based on the deflection of beam when it is subjected to a different point load clear now next i will write down given data again 6 meter long length is given so 6000 mm carries two point load so here i will try to draw the diagram so the, let's say this is point a let's say this is point number b now this will have two reaction r a and r b clear now it carries this simply separated beam carries two load of 48 kilonewton and 40 kilonewton simple 48 kilonewton and 48 kilonewton at a distance of 1 meter and 3 meter respectively from the left support left support is a so from a i will consider at 1 mm there is a point load of 48 kilonewton from a 40 kilometer so distance are 1 meter and distance is 3 meter in this entire distance so try to understand here I need to rub this sketch diagram must be a little bit proportional so I will just rub this B point must be somewhere here. The reaction must be RB. Point will be B1. Clear? So these are the given data. There are two point loads are there. Clear? So I will name the point C and D, which is having distance 1 meter and 3 meter from left hand moment of inertia is given i is given that is 85 into 10 to 6 m, m raised to 4 modulus of elasticity is given that is 2 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square now what they are asking they are asking the deflection under each load so this is the beauty of macaulay's method through macaulay's method we can easily find out deflection at any point on simply supported beam having a standard correction that is point load or UDL clear now next is maximum deflection when I will get maximum deflection when the slope it will be equal to 0 clear so if simply supported beam is there at center point load is there definitely there will be a large or we can say maximum deflection will be there at that time slope that is dy by dx it will be equal to 0 next the point at which maximum deflection occurs means we need to find out the value of x where there will be maximum deflection if there is a center load a single point load is acting at that at that condition we can say that there will be maximum deflection at the center however if you observe this condition there are different two loads are there it is acting different location then where will be the maximum deflection definitely it will be between the point c and d are you getting my point in generally if you observe it is never near about the point d clear but we cannot say that it will be at center or where it is clear so we will see how to evaluate the 
point to fear the maximum deflection will occur and depending upon that we will evaluate the maximum deflection and first we will see the deflection at different location it's clear so for that purpose what we need we need to derive the entire equation using the Maculay's theorem it's clear so first what I need I need the value of RA and RB while deriving I have taken in terms of W clear and the distance and B whatever is there but here the distances are given load values are given so I must evaluate the RA and RB clear so for that purpose I will use our simple equation that is summation of moment at point A it will be equal to 0 simple so here if I take the point A this will be the clockwise clockwise moment I will take negative minus 48 into 1 minus 40 into 3 now RB RB in anti-clockwise direction so I will consider positive RB into 6 equal to 0 so I will take all this in that direction so I can write RB equal to 48 plus 120 divided by 6 so RB value it will be 48 plus 120 divided by 6 it is 28 28 kilonewton simple now next is we have another formula that is summation of f of y equal to 0 all forces downward direction negative upward direction positive so I can write Ra plus Rb minus 48 minus 40 equal to 0 so we don't know Ra but we know the Rb value that is 28 minus 48 40 equal to 0 then Ra will be equal to 48 plus 40 minus 28 it will be equal to 60 kilonewton simple now we know the value for the RA and RB simple now we will consider one section clear consider the section X in last part of the pivot because we always consider the section at the last part so I will consider section over here why if you consider section over here let's say XX then I must consider all kind of the forces acting on this particular beam so I can derive this for entire so let's say this distance from the left section is X clear this is the distance of the section from the left side is X simple now bending moment at the section it is given bending moment at section X is given that will be RA into X so it is clockwise but in the left side remember so I am considering the positive here I will tell you so if you observe this RA RA is going to be a so let's say this point is X point so RA will be clockwise but it is in left side of the section that's why I am taking positive now 48 how, how it is it is in anti-clockwise I will consider negative 48 now the distance is X minus 1 X minus 1 next so here I will consider that dash dot line here again I will consider dot line there is another force that is 40 Newton so it is again negative 40 into x minus 3 distance from the plane this x x plane it is x minus 3 now this is the moment about the x x line now moment at any point how we have we can evaluate it is a standard formula that is e i into d2 y divided by dx square simple e i into 
d2y divided by dx square is that simple okay now just simplify the formula by just put over here r a value is 60 put r a value and just find out the equation that will be the 60x minus 48x minus 1 and minus 40 into x minus 3 that will be remain same d2y by dx square simple now I will rewrite I will take this direction that will be ei into d2y divided by dx square equal to 60 x minus 48 minus 1 minus 14 to x minus 3 so what will be the next we got the equation clear so let's say this equation now d2y divided by dx square what we need we need slope and what we need deflection then what we do we take the integration integrating above equation so integration ei is constant d2y by dx square integration is dy by dx equal to 60 integration of x is x square divided by 2 simple minus 48 integration of x minus 1 we already consider x minus 1 square divided by 2 consider this is a whole x minus 1 simple now next it is minus 40 into x minus 3 square divided by 2 simple so I will just simplify this equation that is 30 x square plus c1 now constant of integration here i am miss this one it's clear so i will write before the dash line simple c1 minus 24 x minus 1 square minus 40 instead of 40 i will write 20 x minus 3 square simple I will make this is equation number one as we are going to use again simple so just mark this is a this is 20 equation number one again integrate above equation with respect to x then this will become e i is constant y equal to 30 into x cube divided by 3 plus c1 x plus c2 I am taking constant of integration in first part only why I am taking because if I want to evaluate between that only deflection between the first part that is point between point a and c then I must consider this integration constant of integration that's why I am taking in first part minus 24 x minus 1 cube divided by 3 minus 20 x minus 3 cube divided by 3 simple so wait I hope this equation is visible clear now just simplify this equation you will get ei into y equal to this will become 10 x cube plus c1 x plus c2 is 3 8 minus 8 x minus 1 cube minus it will not get divided so 20 divided by 3 into x minus 3 cube simple so this is the second equation through which we can evaluate the deflection from this equation we can evaluate the slope simple now here if you observe there are two values are there c1 and c2 both are c1 and c2 are nothing but constant of integration constant of integration simple now here we need to put the boundary point clear so boundary values let's say at 
a point so if you consider this one at a means x is equal to 0 deflection will be equal to 0 so if I draw the deflection then it will be somewhere like this clear so at point B deflection is 0 at point A deflection will be equal to 0 clear so here I can consider at A y equal to 0 and x is equal to 0 so if you put over an equation so I can write from equation 2 from equation 2 I can say y equal to 0 so this will become e i into 0 equal to 10 into 0 plus c1 into 0 plus c2 bucket I don't need this one clear so 0 equal to 0 plus 0 plus c2 so I can say g2 c2 equal to 0 simple next if you consider the second term clear now in second condition so I can con use at B y will be equal to 0 so at the time x will be equal to 6 meter simple so just put the value in equation number 2 then we can write from equation number 2 I can write e i into 0 can give why because y is equal to 0 so this equation so again I am taking this equation over here 10 into 6 cube plus c1 into 6 minus c2 value is 0 minus 8 x value is 6 minus 1 cube minus 20 divided by 3 6 minus 3 cube simple so anything into 0 it will equal to 0 equal to 10 into 6 cube so it will be 2160 plus 6 c1 this will be 0 so I will neglect I can write minus 8 into 5 cube minus 20 divided by 3 into 3 cube simple so if I simplified again then I will get 2160 plus 6c1 minus if I multiply 8 into 5 cube so it will be 1000 minus this will be 180 so I can say it is equal to 980 plus 6c1 so if you evaluate the value for the c1 then c1 equal to minus 980 divided by 6 c1 will be 9 9860 divided by 6 it will be equal to 163.33 so minus 163.33 so we have c1 value equal to minus 166.33 and c2 value it will be equal to 0 simple just put these all values in the equation 2 so from equation 2 we can write ei into y equal to 10 into x cube I think so I must rewrite the equation 10 into x cube plus c1 x so I can write 10 into x cube minus 163.33x no need to well write the value of for c2 minus 8 x minus 1 cube minus 20 by 3 x minus 3 cube so this will be our equation now deflection under the load different load so I will 
start answering for the different cases so what they ask you they ask for the deflection under the each load means deflection at point C deflection at point B if you want to evaluate deflection at point C then put x is equal to 1 if you want to evaluate the deflection at point D then evaluate uh, sorry put x is equal to 3 simple so this is a general equation in which if you put the value then we will get the answer so I will write deflection at C deflection of beam at point C clear so I will write EI into YC equal to 10 into instead of X I will write 1 so X is equal to 1 so 1 Q minus 163.33 into 1 now I will forget the remaining point why because the value what we need we need up to YC C point up to clear so that's why I will neglect entire thing I will take only up to this point clear up to this dotted line because my x value is between point A to point C this is the most important thing through which we must learn the Maclaurin's theorem how many Maclaurin's theorem we learn that this thing we can get the different deflection at different point up to that point we need to consider the equation that's it simple so so this will be uh, simply 10 minus 163.33 clear divided by EI clear so let me check yes uh, yc will be equal to minus 153.33 here kilo newton meter cube remember simple so whatever we have derived it is in different unit so remember this is not the yc only again ei into ei value of ei in mm so I must consider this in mm so I can write yc into ei it will be equal to minus 153.33 into 10 to 3 Newton meter cube simple now if I want to get this value in mm cube then I can write yc into ei equal to 153.33 into 10 to 3 into 1 meter equal to 10 raised to 3 clear so if I want meter cube means 3 cube so 10 raised to 9 clear so I must multiply by 10 raised to 9 and this will become Newton mm cube so again I can write AI e equal to 153.33 into 10 raised to 12 Newton mm cube simple now here we can put the value of e and i simple so i can write yc equal to minus 153.33 into 10 raised to 12 divided by ei value of e is 2 into 10 raised to 5 and i is 85.10 raised to 6 so yc will be equal to It will go minus 9.019 mm. Simple. Now, again, we need to consider or we need to evaluate deflection at point D. Clear? So, same equation I will repeat over here 
E I into Y D equal to 10 X cube. So 10 into 3 cube. So here 3 value is nothing but the distance of D from left hand side minus 163.33 into 3. Again I am considering all values in meter minus 8 into 3 minus 1 cube. So here if you observe I have considered the another dotted value. So this was for first one. Now here I am considering another value also because my load is up to the point D. Clear? Up to point D. That's why I am considering 8 into x minus 1 q. Simple. So likewise if you want to deflection at point B then we must consider entire equation. Clear? So here I will just simplify it to 70 minus 489.99 minus 64 clear so this will be equal to 283.99 kilo newton meter cube so instead of just deriving you may know how to convert this in newton mm cube so 283.99 into 10 is to 12 i will write directly divided by ei value of e is 2 into 10 raised to 5 into value of i is 86 sorry it is 85 i guess yes 85 into 10 raised to 6 so i will get this is yd equal to minus 16.7 mf simple so this is how we have evaluated the point sorry deflection at point c and at point D. Simple. So, now what is us again? Is it over? No. They are asking about the maximum deflection and the point at which maximum deflection occurs. So, if we want to know the maximum deflection where it occurs, where dy by dx that will be equal to 0. So, I can rewrite from this equation so just observe this equation number one ei into dy by dx equal to zero if you put over here zero then put the value for c1 then i will get the another equation so here i will write or we can say maximum deflection maximum deflection clear so here deflection is where yeah anything into dy by dx that will be zero means this will be equal to zero so i will write 30x square plus c1 minus 24 into x minus 1 square equal to zero clear now the value of c1 is minus 163 30x square minus 163.33 minus 24 here i can say x square minus 1 square is 1 1 minus 2 ab 2 1 x so i can write like this simple so again I will simplify this so 30 and 24 x square here I will get 60 x square minus here 2 x and 24 24 into 2 that will be the 48 x minus 24 and this 163.66 so it will be minus 187.33 equal to 0 so this is the and equation clear so this equation can be solved by using formula you might have know minus b plus or minus under root of b square plus 4ac divided by 2b clear
so here value of a is 6 b is 48 and c is 187 minus 187.33 if you put just value then i can get if minus 48 plus or minus again b value is 48 square plus 4 into a is 6 and c is 187.33 divided by 2b 2 into 6 clear so if we neglect the negative root then i will get x is equal to 2.87 meter so at this point so even though i have already explained you that the maximum deflection will occur between point c and d so remember over here so 2. Point something so somewhere here between c and d obviously if there are two forces are acting over there only then there will be the maximum deflection clear so if only point load is acting at center then definitely the maximum deflection will be over there at center clear now how to evaluate the maximum deflection just put this value x value in equation which we are deriving solving so this equation clear so here maximum deflection will occur and if you substitute this value e into i max e equal to 10 into x value is 2.87 cube minus c1 value is 163.33 into x value is 2.87 minus 8 into 2.87 minus 1 cube clear so this will be the 236.39 minus 468.75 minus 52.31 clear so this will be the 284.67 so again this will be in kilonewton meter cube but this ei is in mm square clear so maximum deflection will be just convert it into newton mm cube so minus 284.67 into 10 raised to 12 how it comes i have already explained earlier next e value is 2 into 10 raised to 5 into i value is 85 into 10 raised to 6 so i max will be minus 16. 745 mm or i can write i max equal to 160 sorry 16.745 mm and here i can write instead of negative value i can write downward clear so this is the answer through which we can evaluate the well uh, we can evaluate the maximum deflection value i hope you understood the entire derivation how we have used the deflection uh, equation for the different condition now you might uh, are wondering about this sir why we have not considered this equation now if it is greater than 3 so if you observe over here x minus 3 suppose if you want to evaluate at this particular section xx deflection at xx at that time we, we we will use that equation or if there is specific uh, special point is there let's say this is p point if you want to evaluate the deflection at point p then i will consider this entire equation clear so if you you all want to evaluate deflection at point c then i don't need another points i will consider only this one clear so this is how we will we have solve the equation if you like the video then please subscribe my channel and please share also thank you so much